Aquaculture farming has become an increasingly popular method of producing fish in recent years. With the world's population growing rapidly and the demand for seafood on the rise, many people are turning to aquaculture as a way to meet this demand. In this video, we will discuss the art of raising millions of fish in aquaculture farms and explore some of the key factors that contribute to successful fish farming. Section 1. Site Selection The first and perhaps most important factor in successful fish farming is site selection. Site selection is a critical factor in the success of fish farming operations. Here are some key points to consider. Suitability for fish farming. The site should be suitable for fish farming. This means it should have the appropriate soil type, topography, and climate to support the species of fish you plan to raise. Different fish species have different requirements for water temperature, oxygen levels, and other environmental factors. It's important to choose a site that can support the species you plan to raise. Access to clean water. Fish are highly sensitive to water quality, and the water source for your farm should be free from pollutants and chemicals that could harm the fish. You may need to test the water quality at potential sites to ensure it meets the requirements for your fish species. Consistency of water supply. Fish require a consistent supply of water, and the site you choose should have a reliable source of water. Depending on your location, this could be a river, lake, well, or municipal water supply. This, I don't know how many millions and millions and millions of dollars this facility costs. You'll need to ensure that the water source can provide the volume of water you need for your fish farming operation. Protection from natural disasters. The site should be located in an area that is not prone to natural disasters such as flooding, landslides, or drought. These events can be catastrophic for a fish farming operation, causing loss of fish, damage to infrastructure, and even loss of life. Accessibility. The site should be easily accessible by road or other transportation modes. This will make it easier to transport fish and equipment to and from the site. A site that is too remote may make it difficult to get the necessary supplies and labor, which could increase operating costs. Proximity to markets. The site should be located close to the markets where you plan to sell your fish. This will help reduce transportation costs and increase the freshness of your product. If your farm is located far from your market, you'll need to find a way to transport your fish quickly and efficiently. Availability of labor. Fish farming can be labor intensive, so you'll need to ensure that there is a sufficient labor force available in the area. This may include skilled workers such as aquaculture technicians and farm managers, as well as general laborers who can assist with tasks like feeding and harvesting. You'll also need to consider the availability of training programs to help develop the necessary skills in your workforce. Section 2. Water Management once a suitable site has been identified, the next step is water management. The quality of water is crucial to the health and growth of the fish. Therefore, it is important to monitor and maintain the water quality regularly. Factors such as oxygen levels, pH balance, and temperature should be carefully monitored and adjusted as needed to ensure the fish are healthy and thriving. Section 3. Fish Selection When choosing a species of fish for farming, it's important to consider their requirements for survival and growth. Some factors to consider include water temperature. Different species of fish have different temperature requirements for optimal growth and health. For example, tilapia can tolerate a wide range of temperatures, while trout and salmon require cooler water. Water quality? Fish are highly sensitive to water quality, and different species have different tolerance levels for factors such as pH, oxygen levels, and salinity. Feeding habits. Different species of fish have different feeding habits and nutritional requirements. Some fish are herbivores, while others are carnivores. It's important to choose a species that can be fed a diet that meets their nutritional needs. Growth rate. The growth rate of different species of fish can vary widely. Some fish, such as tilapia, grow quickly and can be harvested in a short amount of time. Other species, such as salmon, take longer to grow and require more time and resources to reach maturity. Disease resistance. Some species of fish are more susceptible to diseases than others. It's important to choose a species that has a good track record of disease resistance in your area. 
Some of the most commonly farmed fish include tilapia, salmon, trout, catfish, and carp. Choosing the right species of fish for your farming operation is essential for success. By considering the factors listed above and doing your research on different species, you can select the best fish for your specific farming environment and goals. Section 4. Feeding Feeding is another critical factor in the success of fish farming. Fish need a well-balanced diet to grow and thrive. The feed should contain all the necessary nutrients, vitamins, and minerals that the fish require. Overfeeding or underfeeding can lead to health problems and stunted growth. It is important to monitor the feeding carefully and adjust the feed as needed to ensure the fish are getting the proper nutrition. Here's a quick guide to the diet of the most common fish raised. Tilapia. Tilapia are known to be omnivorous and can be fed with a range of different types of feed. Commercially available feeds for tilapia typically include a mix of plant and animal-based protein sources, with soybean meal, corn gluten meal, wheat flour, and fish meal being common ingredients. In addition, tilapia can also be fed with supplemental feeds like pellets, flakes, or live feeds such as algae or zooplankton. Salmon. Salmon are carnivorous and require a diet rich in animal proteins and fats. Commercial salmon feed typically contains fish meal, fish oil, and other animal-based protein sources, with the protein content ranging from 40-45% and fat content from 20-25%. In recent years, there has been an interest in developing alternative feeds for salmon, including plant-based proteins and oils. Trout. Like salmon, trout are carnivorous and require a diet rich in animal proteins and fats. Commercial trout feed typically contains fish meal, fish oil, and other animal-based protein sources, with the protein content ranging from 40-50% and fat content from 10-15%. As with salmon, there is an increasing interest in developing alternative feeds for trout. Catfish. Catfish are omnivorous and can thrive on a variety of feeds. Commercially available catfish feeds typically contain a mix of plant and animal-based protein sources, with the protein content ranging from 28-32% and fat content from 4-8%. Soybean meal and corn gluten meal are common ingredients in catfish feed, but other plant and animal-based protein sources may also be used. Carp. Carp are also omnivorous and can be fed with a variety of different types of feed. Commercially available carp feed typically contains a mix of plant and animal-based protein sources, with the protein content ranging from 25-30% and fat content from 3-5%. Soybean meal, corn gluten meal, and wheat flour are common ingredients in carp feed, but other plant and animal-based protein sources may also be used. In addition to the ingredients used in the feed, it's also important to consider the feeding frequency and quantity for each species. Overfeeding or underfeeding can cause health problems and stunted growth, so it's important to monitor feeding carefully and adjust the feed as needed to ensure the fish are getting the proper nutrition. Section 5. Stocking Density Stocking density refers to the number of fish that are kept in a given area. Overcrowding can lead to stress, disease, and poor growth rates. Therefore, it is important to maintain the proper stocking density based on the size of the fish, the water quality, and the available space. Proper management of stocking density can result in healthy, robust fish with good growth rates. Section 6. Disease Prevention and Management Disease prevention and management are also critical in the success of fish farming. Fish are susceptible to a range of diseases, which can be caused by parasites, bacteria, and viruses. Therefore, it is essential to have a comprehensive disease prevention and management plan in place. This may include regular health checks, vaccination programs, and quarantine procedures. Section 7. Harvesting. Once the optimal time for harvesting has been determined, it's important to handle the fish carefully to maintain their quality and freshness. This may involve removing the fish from the water in a gentle and stress-free manner to avoid damaging the fish or causing unnecessary stress. Storing the fish in cool, clean water or on ice to maintain their freshness and prevent spoilage. Processing the fish promptly by cleaning, gutting and filleting as necessary to ensure maximum quality and yield. Packaging the fish for transport or sale 
using appropriate materials and methods to maintain their freshness and quality during transport. Harvesting is a critical stage in the fish farming process that requires careful attention to detail and proper handling and processing techniques. By harvesting the fish at the optimal time and handling them carefully, you can produce high quality fresh fish for sale or consumption. By taking the time to plan, manage and pay close attention to the details of fish farming, you can create a profitable and rewarding venture. We hope that you'll continue to explore the world of aquaculture and discover the many benefits it has to offer. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more informative content like this.